Hello, everybody, and welcome to Seeds of Liberty podcast, episode 43. So we're going to go with Jeremy for the Bivcot No Gov license. Yes, the Seeds of Liberty podcast, as always, is covered by the Bipcot No Government License. This allows for reuse by anyone except for agent, uh, governments and the agents thereof. You can find out more information about this at bipcot.org. So today we have Nick Hazelton coming in from Oregon. He's the host and founder of Anarcho Yakitalism podcast. Uh, he's on iTunes, Stitcher, TuneIn, Podomatic. And most recently, he's on the Liberty Radio Network. Awesome, awesome. The kid's only 17, so give him some props. <laughs> was, some was, amazing stuff. I was just I was just hanging out with my some of my girlfriend's family, and, and we had to leave. And uh, they're like, what do you got to go do? And I'm like, a podcast. And I'm like, What's, what, what? And I'm like, yeah, I'm going to be interviewing a kid. He's 17. He quit school and uh, started farming yaks, and he's actually making money now. And they were like, Wow, he's got to figure it out. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, it sounds quite like it. Thanks. Yeah, yeah. So your, your website is anyak, A-N-Y-A-K.com. He's mm -hmm. on Facebook and Twitter, uh, at Nick Hazleton. So, uh, Nick, thanks a lot for coming to the show. Yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah, I heard I heard you recently. Uh, actually, I, I heard you a while ago, but I didn't really listen to your podcast. You know, Jeremy was talking about how you mentioned the Seeds of Liberty and Dave, <laughs> and he you refused to mention my name because you would butcher it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, did. I even right. I thought I butchered Jeremy's name too. <laughs> Dave Painter is easy to say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They got the they're the kids in class where it was like, oh god, this guy. Angler. <laughs> well, yeah. Well, see, that's Angular. what I'm saying. Well, see, you, got, you, got, you, know, you, did it, you did it right again. That's what I'm saying. You stuttered oh, through nice. it when you stuttered through it, but you said it correctly. <laughs> I sent you a message. About, I, 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 I yeah, wrote yeah. you about that and said that I, yeah, you And if you don't understand the, how the most, double L works in Spanish, <laughs> Cuellar is kind of hard. Danilo is, uh, Cuellar? I had to wait till I actually met Danilo, or no, till I listened to his podcast to know how to say his name. We knew each other for a while. We were friends on Facebook for like six months before I finally started listening to his podcast, and it wasn't until then that I knew how to say his name, so can't blame you for that one. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, so, um, you know, you you started this early, and I'm really, uh, you know, it's great to see such so many young people coming, you know, they, uh, coming into the liberty movement because, you know, that's really what's going to propel it forward that much stronger, you know, as it takes hold with the younger generation because we're all old farts, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Speak for yourselves, Jeremy and Danilo. I'm a, I'm still a young buck. Although, although Jeremy and I are, are, are have a, uh, an influence on the next generation, so that's that's yes. more, that's important as well. Yeah, we we, we we got kids already, so we're gonna be uh, yeah. we're 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 starting off the next the next at least at least at least at least the next couple of generations, hopefully. Building a world with. Um, you know, kids that are educated in uh, volunteerism, self ownership, and property rights. So we'll see where yeah, that that's goes. Fantastic. <laughs> so yeah, that's so awesome. Nick, tell us about your journey and how you came to volunteerism and uh, and anarchy, anarchy, and uh, you know what books and podcasters influenced you along the way. Yeah, sure. So I started out. I was interested in politics at like maybe to start around twelve. Started getting into it. Started thinking. I, I think it really started when I decided to. I, right off the bat, decided to call myself a libertarian before I really knew what it meant. Uh, my, I. It was the 2008 election. It was uh, Obama and McCain, and uh, all of my friends uh, were. You know, they just choose whatever their parents said. But they'd we'd argue about it in school when we were in middle school. And I was like, why? Why? I don't know. I, <laughs> it's kind of stupid, but because none of us knew what we were talking about. But uh, I decided, oh, I don't want to choose a side here because uh, I don't want to piss off anybody. I like my friends. I don't want to split up uh, this little group, right? So uh, to get out of confrontation in any conflict, uh, I asked my dad, hey, who are you voting for? And he said, Bob Barr. So I was like, who's that? The libertarian candidate. And it turns out he's not that great of a candidate at all, but more a libertarian. But he was, I decided. He was popular. People knew who he was. You sound yeah, like you have an true. awesome dad, though. Yeah, so he he didn't really show me anything about libertarianism, but I got into it from there, and I started calling myself a libertarian. I kind of got the idea, okay, let's let's get rid of the government as as much as possible. Let's let's scale it back as far as we can. I wasn't an, an anarchist, but uh, I thought, well, if let the free market do whatever it can, whatever it can't, we'll give it to the the local government, whatever town or counties, and then the, whatever they can't do, give it to the states. Whatever the states can't do, give it to the feds. So eventually I came to the point, I was like, well, why do we even have a federal government? 
And I thought that was pretty stupid. <laughs> so I, I was started to uh, write a blog uh, on my own. Uh, my dad helped me set that up. And I had like a few family, mem family members uh, reading it and they'd argue with me and that's kind of how I ended up being able to perfect my my uh, philosophy and, and make it sound. I just, whatever I was arguing didn't work. I dropped that and whatever worked, I just used that to argue. And uh, it got to the point where I started thinking, well, I need to be a little bit more informed on the issues than I am. So I started looking for some media. I started out with, uh, with like trying to listen to Fox News and even MSNBC and I decided, well, this isn't talking about what I want to hear like this is not talking about the issues I think are part and important and what they're saying is total bullcrap so I uh, I went to NPR and I listened to the Oregon Public Broadcasting on the radio it's pure, it's pure yak crap <laughs> <laughs> but that sorry was that really, was that got stuck it, in my head I, no yeah I get <laughs> you should always be like oh yak shit <laughs> Sorry, back to back to listen to NPR. You <laughs> just having too much fun. All right, go on. Yeah. I am. I'm sorry. I'm just <laughs> no problem. That's good. Uh, so I I got I didn't tired know of that too. You can get too. a contact high through Skype, Dave. I'm I've been dr <laughs> I've been drinking uh, all day. Uh, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> sorry, no I just you know it's one of those days. <laughs> sure. Uh, so I I decided to look up freedom or liberty on my uh, tuning app and uh, I found the freedom fiends and so I started listening to them I thought they were pretty crazy it was like anarchy are you kidding me but a lot of the stuff that they were saying I was like okay this makes sense and I can use what they're saying uh, for my arguments against the federal government because I was like anti-fed mm -hmm. but then I started realizing well Nick this applies to local government as well like you're an anarchist and I was like oh shit I'm an anarchist. <laughs> so it took happens, me about right? three months. I know. So <laughs> that's about where I came in, and I think I was 14 when I decided, oh, okay, I am an anarchist, aren't I? It was actually right about this time, uh, two years ago. 14? Mm-hmm. <sighs> wow. Wait, wait, wait. Two years ago, you said? No, that's not right. Three years. Yeah. Ago. <laughs> I don't even know how old I am. Where'd you learn math? <laughs> Government school? Oh, jeez, I dropped out. I can't do math. <laughs> Why you left? That's right. <laughs> nice. And what about books? Are you a reader or are you more a podcaster? Like with information? Uh, podcasting. I I had a lot of issues reading. I've always not been able to focus on things that well. Um, but so uh, the first audio book. Uh, I haven't really done too many audio books, but mainly podcasts. Mm -hmm. But I did the first libertarian kind of thing book I read was. Uh, I think it's Freedom of Choice. It was an economics book written by Milton Friedman. Mm -hmm. And then mm, I, I like sometimes read little bits and pieces of other libertarian books. Like I have, uh, I'm slowly, really, really slowly over the last like two years, I've been reading Economics in One Lesson by Hen Hazlitt. Yeah, that's a good, that's a good basic. Yeah, I found if I can get an audio book and just uh, stay on track and listen to a little bit here and there, I can really absorb it. Yeah. Yeah, I like to be able to to listen while I'm out working outside. Yeah, well, I, you know, I don't know. For me, I, I I know I found audiobooks. I I have to focus, and that's not exactly easy. I can't imagine focusing on a book it, uh, while while you do your your type of work would be very easy all the time, Nick. With all, you, I'm sure you have a lot of physical uh, labor involved with what you do. With yeah. The farming and everything. Yeah. So it's not too bad. Yeah. I can. That's that's the way I like to multitask. I like to keep my brain going while I'm doing weird little small tasks like setting up pig pens and setting up fences. Yeah. So I got a, a yak question. I know I said we weren't going to really talk about yaks, but I got a <laughs> yak question and then I've, I've got to know. We have our yak expert. Go on. <laughs> are, they, are they pretty, are they pretty tem temperamental or, or are they, or are they like, will they like just run you over if they, if they get mad at you? So it, it depends. Um, typically, Yaks are pretty nice. They're pretty sweet, and if they're not going to be sweet, they're pretty flighty. Uh, so, like, all the yaks I've had except one have been pretty nice, except when they have newborn calves. The only time I've been charged uh, by a yak cow was when she just had a calf like a week ago, and I got in between the calf and the 
And the mother was not very smart, and there's a, I don't remember the entire story, but she <laughs> chased after me, and luckily I hit the fence before she did. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Then, I've had I've had a cow I've had a cow chase me down like that before. Yeah, it's fun. It's fun. <laughs> it's but, one thing a human chasing you down, but when an animal is chasing you down, it's another because you can't be like, okay, stop. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. There's no there's no there's no emotional pleads with animals. <laughs> it's like and you can't get in a fist fist fight with a cow yeah no no <laughs> I've, I've stepped into the wrong bulls uh area before <laughs> yeah right right now i have an aggressive bull he uh he was bottle fed don't bottle fed male animals bottle feed them don't don't <laughs> it's the stupidest thing ever but people like to have little nice pets and then they turn aggressive so uh i don't he wasn't aggressive at first he was a fine little bottle baby um they, we didn't bottle feed him i knew not to do that but uh, so he he turned aggressive, so now he he constantly wants to fight. Like he sees me, and uh, he's like, "I'm gonna kill Nick. I'm gonna do it this time." And he, it's 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 frightening, but I've had a few decently exciting encounters. I've been tossed, and that's probably my best yak story. All right, so now, would you call yourself like we had Cal Moline on the other day? He said he's the statist whisperer. Do you feel like that maybe you might be? <laughs> you, do you feel like that maybe you might be do you feel like maybe you might be stepping into kind of a yak whisper yak territory whisper. or I'm hoping to be there someday there are a lot more people experienced with yaks than me do you, you, know? you, th do, do you but... let me ask you guys a question do you think Nick could get a show kind of like Caesar Milan <laughs> yak but just with yaks <laughs> And where he just goes around and go, okay, here's your problem with your yak, okay? Well, tame your aggressive male. Yeah. Well, I, I, I think, I think the 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 libertarian slash anarchist position would be, well, sure, let's try it. And let the market decide. <laughs> Which is the flippant <laughs> answer, but I think, I think, unfortunately for Nick, yak yak farming in general might still be too much of a niche market <laughs> to, yeah. uh, to be able to draw. A I mean, you never know. Um, I mean, <laughs> it's probably just delusions YouTube, of a crazy put on, man. Put it on a YouTube channel. There you go. There you yeah, go. Yeah, I'd love to see that on a YouTube channel. You know, hey, I'm here, the Yak Whisperer. <laughs> yeah. Or what was that Redford movie? Was it called the Ho It was the Horse, the horse Whisperer. Whisper, yeah. yeah. And then Caesar Milan's the Dog Whisperer, and Nick Hazelton is the Yak Whisperer. It just all makes sense in, uh, to me. Really. <laughs> yeah, well. It's well, I was just gonna say because I've, I mean, I've, I've started listening to your podcast recently, but I've also listened to you on the Fiends for a while now. Um, but. Uh, I I know you said there was there was you met somebody local well somewhat low in your Oregon who you were able to start with I heard you talk about that on a, a couple of your podcasts, um, mm -hmm. what uh like it, I mean and you've also said it's a niche market but like is there like I mean they're obviously you said they're cold weather for the most part like are they are, so it's only in the northern states and I don't know like. Do you, do you know of anybody who actually does it out here on like the East Coast or in the North, or is it just mostly pertain to where you where you are on the West Coast and maybe in the Midwest and stuff? It's mostly in the Midwest and in Colorado. Mm -hmm. uh, Colorado and Michigan have some really big ranches. Gotcha. But I know that there's somebody down in New Mexico. I think they're probably in the hills in New Mexico, though, mm -hmm. uh, raising them. I, I know there's a directory, and I've seen um, – up on iac.org there's some sort of breeders directory i'm not in there because i'm not a member of iac but uh <laughs> yeah so how, how did you get into it is this a family business or you, your parents have no experience in this or what how did you... uh, i so I, it's kind of a, I, I i don't really know exactly where the idea came from to start raising yaks um <laughs> but it, I know that the first time I ever heard of a yak was uh, this book that my mom used to read me and my and my sister. It was I don't remember what it's called. I know it's somewhere in the house, but uh, it was some old lady. She had a bunch of weird exotic pets in this mansion, and uh, one of them was a yak, and they used to drink yak butter tea when they sat around the table and talked about whatever they did. Is is yak milk good? I've heard it's supposed to be really good. It's supposed to have really high uh, fat content. So oh, you, have, you haven't nice even tried delicious. it. You haven't tried it yet. <laughs> no, I haven't been able to get milk from them. They're really hard to milk. Really? Like, if you look oh. at a cow and you look at a at a goat, they've got teats, you know, they're that long. And a goat <laughs> and a yaks are tiny. I guess I don't know. Yeah, they're like this big. 
So he, it's hard to do, and, and then you have to get close to him. You have to get through the hair, and then you have to get close to him. So I haven't been able to get that close yet. <laughs> Understandable. So you're still building confidence and, and rapport with the axe, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Well, you it just makes have sense. To, it, you it, have to it, be it, the leader of the pack, man. You have to establish dominance. I, dude, I tried. That bull beat me. Kayak, <laughs> kayak the bull. He's he's a brute. And yeah. he won. He's but, he's just chief dominance. That, that, do that you only... uh do you kayak? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> That's uh. I, well, I was I was just gonna say yeah, Dave. That that only works to, to with animals to a certain uh size. Um, once they get a little bit, <laughs> once they get a little bit bigger than like, you know, bigger dogs or even horses, I mean, horses are more docile, but other animals, yeah, they're not, they don't really listen as well. And the dominance thing does not, they don't really like that when you play that game with them. <laughs> they, well, they, actually, they take that seriously. I don't know. I mean, yaks are docile in general, aren't they? I mean, they're not usually like a super aggressive animal, right? No, they're not super aggressive. It's good to have, uh, a certain level of dominance sure, where you, sure, sure. They, they're scared but yeah no you don't want to like go out there and headbutt them yeah that's what, that's, that's, what, that's what i'm saying you can only like i say with animals like that you you, you can only go so far so, so since you're in oregon can you give us like what's been like what your perspective of the you know what's going on and with the ranchers out there um you uh, know what you, what you've heard since you're so close to it well, so I'm not too close to it. I, I live on the, the west side of the state near the coast. Oh. Um, I'm on the other side of the coast from of the the coast range here that we have. We have two hill ranges. And then the Malheur Park, where they're all at, is in eastern central Oregon. So I don't know anything really about that area too much. I know it's it's decently pretty, but it's all dry, and it's just kind of in the middle of nowhere. and. <laughs> it's all the everybody that's out there either works for BLM or is a rancher. Um, I don't know though. I haven't paid too much attention to the story. I try not to be too informed on in the news, but uh, I don't. I don't know. I don't think that it was very smart. Um, but we'll see what happens. I guess. Yeah, J Jeremy did some good memes on the. Uh... <laughs> yeah, no, I, I love. I'm just asking for snacks. It's well, yeah, the, well, those ones are just, just uh, yeah, they were they were asking the for snack memes. That. The snack memes are out of control. Um, well, there, there, there's been a lot. Well, there's been a, hey, there's been a, that. That is the one thing. I, 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 it's funny that you said that because I, I think I heard you say that. I don't know. I listened to two podcasts with you in it today. I think so. Um, Me? I'm not sure which one? No, oh. no, not you, Nick. Um, so I'm not sure. I'm not sure which one I heard, but I heard you say it. You say the same thing that you don't really pay attention to that stuff, and I, I've kind of taken retaken that approach again, although. I, I have to for me making purposes. I have to pay attention at least a little bit. Um, yeah. But uh, yeah, I mean, what what do they got to do? I mean, people are just fighting over it. I, I just interject in conversations that I see on social media or if I hear people talking about it as I'm walking around uh, with my dogs and stuff. Um, I just try to interject, you know, like, who cares, you know? <laughs> it's, Google, it's, Google, it's, Google it's, palm trees. Exactly. People are they're fight they're 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 fighting, you know, they're you know, they're they're asking they're they're begging for a leash. they're begging for more you know, more room on the leash. So um who you know, it's 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 silly. It's not gonna you know nobody nobody's getting hurt at the moment, so everybody you know, people are wishing death on other people, it's just insane. Um there's so many more better things we can be doing with the time. <laughs> uh like you know I just I just hate their name. I hate their name. Uh, Ooh. The the, the 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 people that just took over the BM, BLM office or whatever. They have a BLM. They took over a picnic area. They didn't take over any office. No, this, you say office. It's I like thought they took over a federal office. A no, refuge. it's like a, it's like, it's like it's like a it's like it wasn't a, an office. Oh, no, it wasn't. No. It's, I, it's yeah, I, I think it's, I think no. I I believe it's classified as an office because there's <laughs> a structure. Ah. But like think. I, I don't know, see, because I grew up in the in the in the mountains of Pennsylvania, so we had it was it was like more like rural, you know, a lot more rural than anything I'm I'm living in now. Um, but you know, you have like these shacks in the woods where like you know for like camps, like a camp council or what have, like that's considered an office. Um, so like that's what they took over. It's not like they, they, I mean, is it considered quote unquote federal land? Yes, it absolutely is. So they are everything else about that but it's like it's it's all got blown out of proportion on purpose um by both sides i think it was a uh, false i think it was just tr they're trying to see they're they were trying to ju uh, to gauge public opinion and they set that up i think it's a fake um see i, I mean 
I, 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 I think uh, I think I think the Patsy is the Bundy brothers. Listen, listen, I like to get I like to get as tinfoil hatty as the next guy. Um, but when it comes to stuff like that, the whole like it could be any one of these things that could be happening. And and the reality is we know that it has happened, stuff like that. Like, you know, we yeah, I mean, you know, unless you're a complete idiot at this point. And I hate to be so mean to people when I say when, cause I'm usually not that mean, but you really have to be a complete idiot at this point to not realize that agent provocateurs exist and they work for it. It's not it's not just random people. They work for the for the government in some capacity. You know, Do you it's remember the time um... and time again. You see it all the time. Um, so you know, is it possible? Absolutely. You know, it could, I mean, to, to make it all the way to the fact that they set it up again, to me, it, I don't think it matters. Like, that's why I think staying away from these topics other than to kind of poke fun at it and maybe use it as a platform to reach out to other people and be like, Hey, you know, maybe, maybe show them why it doesn't matter as much and why, you know, what, what other things you could focus, you know, try to direct their attention away from that. Um, but you know, cause it, cause it doesn't like, to me, it doesn't matter whether it's by design or happenstance, the result the what's going on is still going on and it's not changing anything for me personally. It's, you know, I, I'm not, I'm not any better or worse off for it. Um, you know, I have, I have to fight my own, I have to fight the tyranny over here as it is. So <laughs> I, don't, I don't, I don't have time to really worry about that. Um, no, I mean, I don't trust, I don't, I just really don't trust much of anything anymore. Uh, because you know, like there's CIA reports that had to be released or whatever, but like the, there were communist groups in the seventies and sixties that like 81% of the people in the group would be working for the CIA. So, well, well no, yeah. that's what I'm saying. It's, we, it, we know that is what I'm saying. It's, it's, it's well documented that, that, you know, the CIA, FBI, whoever, it, all different factions are like going back to even before the CIA with the OSS, you know, it, that's just the way they operate. And it's, so, it's been, so that's not a, you know, like I said, what, what, what are you gonna, what does it, what does it really matter? I guess I get, you know, that that's my point. What does it really matter that so, if, 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 they, if they did it or not, it's still happening. It's still, uh, so, so Jeremy, you, you mentioned agent pr provocateurs and, and I assume government trolls would be with that. So are you saying this, the random girl with no mutual friends on Facebook who sends me requests in a two piece bikini does not, is not interested in my volunteerism <laughs> and anarchy posts. Are you saying that's what you're trying to tell me? <laughs> I, I I will blow your mind. I will blow. He really wants you. <laughs> let you me blow. Let me blow your mind. Okay. I have a friend who is. He's in the Seeds of Liberty not, group. You liar. I have a friend. He's in the Seeds of Liberty group. His name is Kevin. He met his wife on MySpace. I uh, seriously. He met his wife on MySpace. He thought it was just like a troll, just like what Danilo was saying. They're married now, and she's 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 from Mexico. No and <laughs> no, I, I this was MySpace, Danilo. Oh, MySpace. Sorry, sorry, sorry. There was, there was, you had your top eight, and that was it. Oh, yeah, you know, yeah. when I was on MySpace, Nick was about eight, so <laughs> Nick never knew the wonders of MySpace. Did oh, he missed the boat on MySpace, buddy. Woo, he did not miss anything. So, so, so Nick, a couple you, of years you, my life, I'll never get back. You're part, you're part of that generation that does not know life without the internet, I think, right. Yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> I mean, I didn't have I didn't have access to it when I was a kid, but I've had it since I've been able to think for myself, right? Well, technically, the internet's been around since like '58. So, but <laughs> I, I, I don't want to be that guy. But look, I get what you're saying. <laughs> I, don't know. <laughs> I it's, think it's another I don't want I'm to not, be racist, but I, Jesus I'm Christ, not, Dave, you I'm found not, a I'm new not, way to. I didn't think you could possibly find a new way to pull that one off. I'm just. not. I'm not sexist, but I totally got I exactly what I. Guy. I totally got exactly what I wanted out of that. <laughs> but you know, anyways, not Nick, you yak farmers, but <laughs> Nick, you said you you Nick, you said you uh, you wanted to talk about entrepreneurship, and you know what? I got to be honest with you. I want to hear what you got to say. I, 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 this entrepreneurship thing is, is firing me up. I, I'm about to become an entrepreneur. Um, just why don't you talk about some of the difficulties you had starting up and uh, with, with the yak farming or, or even like some of the apprehensions you had when you're like, am I going to do this? You know, like, yeah. So I got into, um, I, I wanted to get into agriculture because I found that I didn't like school. Uh, everybody was telling me I should be a lawyer. And, yeah, I mean, uh, of course you hate school, so let's go yeah, farm. Like everyone knows that. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I, just, <laughs> I decided I'm gonna get into ag. So I decided oh, I'm gonna go for yaks. Um, it didn't take very long for me to actually get yaks. I, I happened to get lucky and uh, I found some really cheap uh, ones at an auction. And you know, maybe they weren't as as fantastic as another yak, but dude, it it's awesome. So I got my yak started. So I got pretty lucky. Like otherwise, it would have taken me a lot more money to get in. But uh, you know, I had to take out a loan to buy them. Uh, paid it off pretty quickly though, and uh, I think I paid twenty five hundred for the starter herd. And the the things that would have kept me back if I didn't have family that had land would have been the the main thing a place to have the animals. I uh, you know it, some people don't have that opportunity right that they don't have family that's been in the area for a hundred years, and you can just put them out in the field. So that would be the main thing there. Uh, but I got past that. The main thing was money, and then the, I guess the thing that kept me back for the longest was <laughs> school. I stayed in school for another year um, before I could get out, and I had the yaks. For that long and i just didn't get to do anything with the axe or pigs uh because of that but um recently man it's it's not too difficult to sell good meat i guess uh the only thing has been marketing you know if i could push that in a different way that's what i'm learning have you right contacted now. any like local restaurants maybe steak houses that were like hey i can get you yak steaks so i haven't done that yet because i don't have enough product to move so uh, I'm only butchering a yak a year, and uh, I, I would like to scale up and be able to do that, though. Well, make uh, yak jerky. <laughs> yeah, no, I, it sells for a lot. I've seen people do that. And, make uh, yak jerky. Yeah, it's it, it's a good idea. But And then uh, send me a lot of it. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll so tell I'm you if it's – I like spicy stuff. Just keep that in mind. You are, not right. allowed, you are not allowed to send Dave any yak jerky if you are not going to send me yak steaks <laughs> <laughs> in New York. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> that is not allowed. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, that's cool. Yeah, so like, So you just like – you just nutted up and went for it. You were like, I'm buying mm-hmm. some yaks. I'm, I'm at least going to try this out. I, Dude – Man, that's amazing you did that at 16. That is amazing. And then it's amazing that you went to school. I bet you were like, fuck this Py- Pythagorean theorem. I got yaks to go fucking take care of. <laughs> yeah, so that's what happened is I decided I need to get out of school, bought the yaks, and uh, for the rest of the, the that sophomore year, I was just kind of, I just fucked around. I didn't do my homework. I just stopped. I did. I, I decided to be respectful. I'll do your work in your class. But uh, you're not gonna let. I'm not gonna do your homework. So I, that's what that was the thing. Yeah, I skipped school a couple times uh, with permission, actually, from from my dad. <laughs> <laughs> so un-yak, I got to, un-yak related business. Yeah, so I stay <laughs> home a couple of days and I get to work with them. Um, but yeah, that was that was kind of my my thought. So, it was like, so why am parents, I here? Both your parents <laughs> of you leaving school. Um, it took a while for them to be supportive. Uh, it took right about a year to convince them that this was a good idea. And uh, so this is, I always love telling people this, is my dad is actually the principal of the school I dropped out of. Wow. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I knew that too. <laughs> mm-hmm. I didn't know that. That's insane. <laughs> wow. And yeah. he was like, yeah, okay, this makes sense. <laughs> so, so, so when you say with my dad's permission, that's... That, that yeah, that, you, yeah, you really uh-huh. needed... Yeah, Yo, that's... I need that. Like, was yeah. this, a, well, this had to have been an, uh, an all-out battle kind of uh so i decided that I was I, like drive. like this is like telling me so, that you were you know a shia cleric son and you became a christian pastor <laughs> like this is Wait, so, 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 so your father's libertarian ish <laughs> yeah he leans that way my uh my grandfather and my great uncle who, 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 that's usually the political influence i've had they were pretty right wing and then my dad was considerably i guess he, he called himself a libertarian i think and he still does, um, but yeah, that's because that was that's who he was. So what finally broke down? What did he finally go, just go? You're right on this. Like, what did you finally? <laughs> I'm sure what? it was a, a lot of or, chipping away. He actually but... said that to you. <laughs> I don't know if he ever told out, me yeah. I, was I was right. Gonna, I was gonna say, is the jury still out for him? <laughs> I can imagine. Well, I can what imagine. made them decide to allow you to do this? Uh, yeah. Um. So I decided I wanted to get out my freshman year. I told them, I told my parents, like, hey, I don't like school. I want to drop out. And he's like, well, no, Nick, you got to get a, a high school diploma. You're, we're going to keep you in school. You have to do this. And I was like, well, 
okay, I gotta find a way. Let's let's try and work together. Let's try and find a way to make school easier. So we we pulled some tricks there where I could get extra credit for doing an independent project. I did the podcast, and I was jumping through a lot of hoops. And so he was all on board, like, hey, get Nick. As long as he gets his diploma, it's fine. And it finally it got down to it. I was just like, you know what? I don't want to jump through the hoops anymore. I don't give a shit about a high school diploma. So I just gave up in school. And then I think I told him, it's like, you know, I'm either going to fail out or drop out. And so he's just, I, I, I was being a little bit of a brat, but I mean, <laughs> that's, that's what I had to do to get my freedom. So I, I just stopped. I started failing a lot of my classes. And then finally, he's like, okay, you know what, Nick? You have a decent plan with the business. I think this is a decent idea. I want to help you out. I think this is, uh, you obviously enjoy doing it. And uh, we're not going to get you to perform very well in school. And uh, this wasn't, I don't know if he ever really spelled that out, but he's like, okay, I'll let you drop out if you make a self education plan. Because he's been a fan of School Stocks a little bit less than, than I have, School Stocks Project that Brett Benat does. And uh, so he'd been listening to that. So he is he he's, he's no longer a principal, or is he still a principal? He's re, he's like half retired. He doesn't do like a lot of the stuff dealing with kids anymore. But uh, he's in the background of the school right now. Okay, okay, yeah. Well, that's but cool yeah. that he's into. This, he's a principal, and he's like, yeah, this school sucks. Project is uh, pretty. <laughs> pretty dead on like we're <laughs> shit <laughs> well so the thing is we he runs a, the charter school which is a decent school like by all standards kings valley charter school in this area is, is top it's top notch like this is a, a challenging school and you're going to get a quality education if you want to go to college and become some sort of elite white collar um person mm -hmm. but I, that's not what i wanted to do <laughs> so it didn't really fit out and i think he saw that so uh you know, he let me go after I made the plan. Yeah. I, I'm getting yelled at for wanting to be a mushroom farmer and not go back to working in computer IT. So I understand. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but I, I'm I'm not I'm not I'm not 16. So uh, I'm, well, I'm I, you know I can say you know what I'm going to do whatever I want. <laughs> well, you well Dave, yeah, but you not only that, but other people you've also lived a different life for a very long time. Nick's actually just starting out, so he actually does have. It's amazing. I'm so jealous. Well, no, well, if I would have yeah, known. Well, well, yeah, it's funny. I, I was actually going to say that I, I, the, the, the few people I've come across, who, you know, the your age or maybe a couple of years older, um, I always I always say the same thing. I am both like ridiculously ecstatic that you exist and jealous at the same time because it's like, man, so many years ahead of me. Um, but it's funny. You, you know, like, like I said, I, I, I had known the thing about the, your dad being the principal. And the last time I heard you talk about it, you didn't mention it. So I was like, well, did I remember that correctly? But you just but you just confirmed that. Um, See, I didn't have it on that level, but both my parents were teachers, and I, my mom did work in the school. I, my mom did teach in the school I was in for most of my elementary career, and she had a very big influence in the school because she was like the union rep and all this stuff. So, like, she basically was she was either the, she was either the principal's best friend or the worst enemy the entire time wherever she was. That was just her gig, um, and. Uh, so yeah, so I, I I know that I know what that to a certain extent I definitely know what that's like. But it's awesome yeah. that that he um that you were finally able to convince him, um because to get that, not that you necessarily need it, but I mean I mean well actually technically in your situation you did need it, but I mean like for, from a from like you know you knowing what you want to do and needing that, you know that parent approval like you know you don't actually in any other circumstances you don't really necessarily need that if you're you know somebody who's you know able to take care you know wanting to be independent. Um, but, uh, it's always, it, it is nice, especially when it's somebody who's in that field. Cause like I said, I, I, I was well out of school by the time I finally came to all this, but I actually had some of that similar stuff with my mom. Cause my mom finally retired after 30 something, almost closer to 40, almost 10 years of teaching. And, uh, she quit because she, she finally started to see the system for what it had, at least for what it had become. And yeah. So when my kids, when my, I have, I have uh, four year old twins and when they were born, she, and I told her right off the bat that actually before they were born, I told her that we intended on homeschooling them. Um, and that was before I was even an anarchist. We had just already decided that by before that, cause my, my, uh, my wife was in, um, in education too. She was in special education, but we had already decided that before the kids were born, they're like, yeah, we're not sending them to public schools um, or even any private school or anything. We're just going to take care of it ourselves. Um, yeah. But to get that, my, when my mom turned around to me after all, you know, my dad was a teacher too. And like when both of them were like, yep, we approve. I'm like, oh, 
Thank God. Because <laughs> it's like, because like I said, you don't necessarily need it, but it still feels good. That's like, here we are, somebody who is in this field for like, you know, however long. And they're looking at you going, yep, yep, you're making the right decision. <laughs> yeah, for sure. No, and, and it's also nice to have parental approval. Like, uh, yeah. you, you like your parents to appreciate what you're doing, too. Sure, but no, yeah, That's awesome, dude. Yeah. That's really cool. I'm glad you're homeschooling your kids. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, 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 we're definitely going to. Like I said, they're, they're just about on the cusp. And Well, actually, I shouldn't say that because I'm not going to push them. Um, <laughs> they may start next year, the year after, or the year after that, whatever. Uh, sure. we're, yeah, we're trying to go more the unschooling route, but that's just that's awesome. Uh, yeah. yeah, 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 and, and uh, like I have kids, a uh, five-year-old and a three-year-old, and um, and I meet a lot of homeschooling families, and and when I tell when we talk about homeschooling, Fam I'll... families, he meets the moms. <laughs> He's, He's uh, talking, uh, he meets this the is moms, the hot homeschooling I'm, 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 moms. I'm scaling down now. Scaling this is down. some Danilo double speak have right now. Have you ever seen the Have you ever seen the hashtag Danilo memes? Um, uh -huh. Nick, yeah, yeah. yeah. Have you seen? <laughs> I I don't believe I. I homeschooling families it's a little bit of an <laughs> all right i got actually technically he meets the kids too so i guess technically we he can say family oh my God. all right this is some danilo double speak i'm out i'm out on this <laughs> say what you mean danilo well they say if you want the mother to like you that you have to have a good relationship with the kids right Oh, oh God! Anyway, you're not helping your case. Now he's not giving advice on how to deal. Now giving advice. That's a meme now. I'm making that after the show ends. <laughs> All right. Why wait? Do it right now. Yeah. No, nah, I'll do it after. Be, that's gonna be the meme for the show this week. <laughs> you, you, you're corrupting oh. this young, fragile mind, Jeremy. <laughs> if you, if you want to get a mom to trust you, you gotta get those. Gotta get to the kids first. He was a host on the Freedom Fiends at 15 years old. What, weren't you? He doesn't have a young, fragile mind. Is that, no, yeah, not anymore. So, so does that does that make you the young? Right, so I assume that's is that the youngest fiend? Like, yeah, like, I think so. Fun? Yeah. Wow, that's I mean, amazing. That's really awesome. I think the no, next what I was going to say. Derek J. How old is he? Eric's like 24, no 25, somewhere, 26, somewhere, mm -hmm. somewhere in that neighborhood. Uh, got like nine, Derek, nine Derek J. Years. Makes me laugh. I love Derek J. Over pod, pod gay to, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Pod, 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 pod A too, too gay. Too, too, pod, pod, pod Bay too gay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Derek J's victim was uh, crime spree. is one of the greatest. I watched him too. Oh, and he's so in antagonistic. I love yes, it. Yes, I know. You know, and you ever, nobody have you ever seen no. that Danilo? Have you ever watched that? I, I, no, no, I never saw the whole thing. Oh, you and, no, and no, and no, so police great. officer so wants great. some effeminate guy just yelling in their face. <laughs> 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 he's perfect, man. I love Derek J. And he, he's got he's got arrested a couple times, right? <laughs> yes, a couple. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, a number of times. Yes. Yeah. So Nick, um, like oh, Danilo, Danilo done with his point. I'm sorry. Oh, sorry, I forgot Danilo <laughs> was on a point. We stepped all over Danilo. Oh. <laughs> he started talking about moms again, and <laughs> to be honest, I forgot what happened in the last five minutes. It's a sensitive topic in this group. All right. So, <laughs> sorry, Nick. Yes. So when I talk to <laughs> when I talk to these homeschooling mothers and they criticize government schools, most of the time what they're criticizing is Common Core. Yes. Right. And that that's what they think the problem is like. Common, oh, yeah. You hate common. Yeah, me, too. I hate common core. Whereas, no, it's like it's like we don't like we don't just dislike Obama or Bush or Clinton. We dislike the idea of a ruler. Right. See, so the, the idea of government school, the idea of monopoly on education or forcing kids to go and learn a particular thing for 12 years. You know, um, that's what we object to. Right. So. So it's so important. And, and, and actually homeschooling mothers, you know, because I'm around homeschooling mothers, that's easiest for me to talk to and spread, uh, you know, talk about volunteerism because it's like, it's like, you know, they're already critical of the government school. So then it's like, well, the government, if the government can't do schooling right, then maybe you can spread that out a little bit too, you know, everything else. Yeah, sure. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Like, it's like, you know how they really screw up on, on teaching people stuff. Yeah. They do that for everything. They screw up everything. <laughs> You know, I, I, I made a post the other day. I got a ton of likes. I said, if you've ever been in the DMV and you support government, just realize every every facet of government is ran as efficiently as the DMV. <laughs> Maybe not the department of kill shit and blow stuff up, right, but they, every other, everything yeah, else. Military, right. Well, I don't think you can necessarily even call that one efficient. 
It, it, other they, than, they, other, they kill other, quite a bit of people. Well, no, they, they, yeah, they kill, they kill stuff, and they spend a lot of money. But efficient on the well, whole. Well, they also no. blow shit up. Uh, I guess. Okay. Yeah, you weren't thinking about the shit that they blow up. <laughs> <laughs> this is true. I, I, I left out the blown up shit. You're absolutely that's, correct, that's, Dave. That's, I apologize. Got to be complete in your analysis. So. <laughs> <laughs> what Danilo yeah, yeah. said. <laughs> Yeah. So um, yeah. So so yeah. You're right, Dave. It's all a monopoly. You know, whenever the government takes control of any entity in in the economy, you know, it's the pervert the the incentives become distorted and perverted. Right. No longer supply. No, no longer the concern is for the customer because there is no customer when there's you know when you're when you're a victim there is you're not a customer anymore. You're a victim. Right. That's why you know the the term taxpayer. It's uh, it's it's you know we're not taxpayers we're we're tax victims right we don't pay taxes they take taxes right so it's important to have I'm a proud tax victim it sounds so much differently when you say it right right <laughs> I pay my taxes proud yeah. well. anyways Nick uh, so like with your yak farming I know you uh, you were telling me you were you were doing the pigs too and the pigs are killing it you said they're doing really good. Uh, are you are you planning to add on anything else? Maybe buy up more land and start like a for real like ranch. Um. So well, right now I don't I don't think I have anywhere to buy land. Uh, right now we've got about forty acres on the farm, so I've got enough room to expand. Um, I'm gonna keep doing that. I want to get. So a Obama few more. gave you forty acres and a and a yak. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I just said that because that has to be the show title now. <laughs> Anyways, uh, that, that's vermin supreme, isn't it? See, Dave, you just went. You, <laughs> oh, you, 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 you just no, you just went and ruined it, Dave. I was going to make that the show title, but since you set that up like that, now I'm taking it away from you. Uh, uh, <laughs> oh no, no, that's too good. It's too good. So, so you, you got 40 acres. You're you're farming on. You're, you're you've got yaks and pigs. Are you thinking about adding like chickens or maybe? Uh, I don't know, anteaters. I don't know. You're pretty out there. <laughs> I don't think I've ever heard of an aardvark farm. <laughs> is that what an anteater is, an aardvark? I didn't know that. Aren't they basically the same? I don't know, Jeremy. I'm, I'm, I'm way off on my Central Zoology. American mammal Zoology. that eats weird Zoology. stuff. There yeah. you go. <laughs> nice. Yeah, I'd, I'd like to throw on a couple more chickens. We've got our own little flock of like 10 birds. They're just layer hens, um, but I would like to start doing a little bit of meat production someday because uh, broilers have a pretty quick return. You know, they they mature in like a few months compared to a pig, which is wow. a year, and then a yak is two years. So I'd like to kind of get into that a little bit, but uh, I don't like birds very much. Well, see, uh, you're... I don't I don't blame you. Birds are not. Oh. I, I'm an I'm an animal guy. I, I have a pet sitting company. And you I should keep going. Animals, but... Birds should, are nasty, yeah. nasty. Most birds, birds are very nasty animals. Mm -hmm. So, so, yeah. so uh, you so should Nick... keep going esoteric, man. You should keep going for this. Like, you should start growing reindeer too. <laughs> I'm, ser I'm serious. And what you do is you make the market for it, and you have essentially a soft monopoly on it because you're the only one providing for it. And if you got a few restaurants buying reindeer and yak. And pigs reindeer. from you. I don't think anybody's gonna. Who's buying reindeer? Man? Yeah, they're, they're doing people, it, man. There are people I who mean, farm reindeer. What? See, I don't from, know how good. It I rest is. I my case, reindeer. Long Island boy. In America, in America, or, or yeah, like, really? uh, mostly in Canada. But there are a few people here. I did not um, know that. I know there's a place in Oregon that has a bunch of wild, uh, not wild. I mean, exotic animals. See, you just need to get reindeer. into exotic farming. Yaks, reindeers, and pigs. And I, you know that's a really good idea. And one of the reasons <coughs> why is is the agorist angle here. So yaks are not as regulated by the USDA. I was just gonna ask you that. What are the regulations? Of, yeah. Awesome. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> normally you have to take these. They're called amenable species. I don't know what amenable really means, but it's. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen that word except in the USDA documents. So, it's, it's, I don't it's, know. It's, no it's legal mumbo jumbo for we well, own your What ass. in the hell does that yeah, mean? What right. is the word? <laughs> amenable. 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 A M E N A B L E. Amenable. So, amenable species like cattle and uh, chickens and I think goats and sheep and, and hogs are all regulated by the USDA in that you have to take them to a special. Uh, USDA inspected facility when you uh, harvest them and process them 
Uh, otherwise, you can't sell the prepackaged meat. So you can sell a live animal. I can sell my live pigs and then take them to the butcher and then give somebody like they can buy half of a hog or a whole hog and I can deliver it to them. But I can't sell individual packaged meat unless it's taken to a USDA inspected place. But yaks are not regulated in that way and neither are stuff like alpaca and <coughs> deer aren't. Uh, I think Amenable. You can, uh, I think they might be changing it with emus and, and ostrich, but I think they're the same way. Bison, I mean, bison, I mean, are, bison aren't either, I thought, right? Bison, I think, are, aren't they exempt, I thought? I think they are, too, yeah. Yeah, because I remember, I remember, because when I started eating, bite, when I started getting bison meat, when I found out I could get it at my local, um, uh, you know, the superstore BJ's, um, yeah. I was, I was, I was like, oh, this, I'll try this, and I found out it was delicious, and I was like, and then I looked at it, you know, because, because it said it was organic, and then I looked into it, I was like, yeah, that, no, that doesn't, they, they don't have any, there was no seal, and I was like, well, that's weird, and I'm like, and then I looked into it, I was like, yeah, you don't, we don't need it, I was like, oh, awesome, right, yeah, no, it's, <laughs> that makes it's, me even more, that makes me even happier to have it. <laughs> amenable, amenable, amenable means able to be controlled, organized, or affected by something. Anarchists of cattle. There you go. <laughs> well, well no, that would be crazy if, if 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 so many people started farming yaks because they, there was a loophole there and yak meat became huge. That'd be funny. Yeah. Well, no, it's, it's funny. That's actually why I uh, why, I, why I was asking before about you know the where they you know the temperature ranges and they stay and stuff because I mean. Hmm. I don't think any. I don't really. I'm sure there's got to be somebody up in like upstate New York who's doing I it. I think but there I, are. I, I gotta get the. I'm trying to get the heck out of New York, but it's not exactly easy right now oh. with the situation. My kids and my and, and my and my. Well, my business is here. I can't just. I have a pet sitting company. Oh, I can't yeah. just. I can't just pick. I'm that gonna up need and, people to pick mushrooms, Jeremy. <laughs> yes. Yes. Go, go, going from being the dog walking oligarch that you believe me to be, Dave, for the last ten years, to being a mushroom picker for you. I love you, brother, but uh, I'm not sure I can make that type of transition. Um, hey, this, is a mushroom, this is kind of a side note here, Dave, but have you ever looked into growing chanterelles? Chanterelles are, are, are rough. They're the yeah. uh, the one the one they pretty much only grow out in the wild. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Mortals yeah, and chanterelles people... are really hard to grow, yeah. like in a controlled or forced environment. Because I, I think chanterelles, what the chicken of the the forest is what they call it. I can't chicken remember. Of... No, that's a different one. Okay, there's all chicken right. Chicken of the woods, and then there's there's chanterelles. All right, but, yeah, chanterelles, heard... chicken of the woods, and those you, it's it's yeah, it's damn near impossible to grow them, like on poor on purpose. Now I can <laughs> if. Yeah, yeah, that, they say it grow on purpose. It's, no, it's, I know, it's, I, I, it's, I was just, I, it just sounds funny, but I, I know what you mean. Yeah, yeah. Um, I can tell you how to do, uh, if you have a lot of land, I can tell you how to make morals or create the environment for morals to grow. And uh, morals are expensive. If you pick a lot of oh, them, yeah. you can sell a pound of dried morals for a lot. You pretty much can yeah. name your price, like maybe 250 an ounce. I, I, or, I mean, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I need to look into I, I, this more. I'm oh, sorry. Go ahead, Nick. Yeah, no, dude. Mushrooms are amazing. They're really, really, really fun. Uh, we so I, here in Oregon, I live right out in the woods, right in the the coast range. So it's it's awesome to to try and forage for mushrooms. And I've got a few places I want to check for morels, morels. I, I call them morels. <laughs> y'all, y'all sound funny out there. <laughs> yeah, I'm from Alabama. We say everything wrong. So. That's yes. right. We're we're all over the place. We all. Mm-hmm. Like, but, uh, well, no, it's, it, I was just, I was just going to say, it's funny. Like I, I actually, I, I like mushrooms and I've never heard of any of the varieties that you guys are talking about. So I need to get out there and try more. Yeah. <laughs> Damn, yeah, man. I I am so... Yeah, you I, do. I, 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 don't, I don't think I, I, I may have eaten, I may have had it before. Is there a Whole Foods going... out in the, out on Long Island where you live? Yes, I have a Whole Foods. I we'll just go, don't go there. We'll go to Whole Foods and get a bunch of different mushrooms and try them. I, I should do so. There you go. Yeah. So, um, fortunately, the one, the one, the one type of mushrooms I, I, I want to get my hands on, I just haven't been able to. So, so my only focus, but it's a whole other story. So, uh, Nick, has, <laughs> have you, know have people you, who sell spores? I know people who do sell spores. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I know what you're talking about. Jim. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> those would be, uh, you didn't those hear would be, those would be very, those would, oh, yeah, you know, you, you don't know anybody. Um, those would be very, uh, profitable, especially out in my neighborhood. Um, so are you selling yaks for Bitcoin and silver and gold? Uh, 
nobody's offered, but totally, I would. Um, <laughs> I'm about to get set up with Airbits, I think. Um, MK Lord, she's going to help me set up so I could be like a business who will accept like these, oh, nice. the, the Bitcoin cool. stuff through them. Cool. I think I'm considering that. She hasn't really offered that, but she said, ah, oh, maybe we can make that work. So I, but yeah, if somebody was going to pay with Bitcoin or even gold and silver, anything other than uh, Federal Reserve notes, totally. Awesome, man. That's, that's, that's cool to hear. Mm -hmm. uh, what's uh what's what's like what's like the best part on a yak to eat that's a good question um i really have enjoyed the burgers uh burgers just awesome in any you know i just love burger but they have some really nice uh cuts of steak you know the nicer cuts on a cow they have the same thing um i i haven't had tenderloin uh i really want to but i've had new york steak cuts and uh, a few other steak cuts, and they're it's delicious. Be, it's being the, the being the southern boy that I am, I'm I'm just thinking about a some yak ribs uh, smoking on the smoker for <laughs> yeah. about six or seven hours and seeing how it's how it tastes. But I don't know if I'll ever get to do that. Yeah, no, maybe I, you'll have to have maybe you have to get some yak oh. ribs and, and uh, freeze them and mail them to me for sure. <laughs> <laughs> and then I can I can make a video of it. There you go. Oh, yeah, maybe some promotion. Yeah, it's a cross promotion. <laughs> awesome. so, so, so tell me, tell me some of the some of the interesting guests you had on your podcast, your anarcho yakism podcast. Um, well, okay, the first one I just popped in my head was Joshua Sheets. You guys familiar with him? No, uh, nah, he's he's an interesting dude. He does radical personal finance, and uh, he's given me some amazing business tips. Uh, he he's got it on lock, like how to become rich. And it's, I know he's 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 pretty decently well off for a guy who just does podcasting, and uh, he's got some really good tips about how to start a business. And so far, I've been trying to follow those. And I mean, I'm not making a whole lot of money yet, but they seem to be pretty sound to me. So that's that's kind of one of the more exciting ones. I only have two interviews with him. I think the last one was episode sixty, and uh, that's a pretty good one about business planning mostly. And uh, I've had awesome. Brett but not on. That's always exciting. And uh, I, uh, I, I got go a friend. I, I got a friend. I'm gonna connect you with when we get off the uh, phone. He also lives in Oregon, but he's doing aquaponics with tilapia yeah. and all this. And he has not paid one single tax in about ten years. Ooh, nice. That's awesome. So I won't say his name on here. And I'm not saying that Nick Hazleton is going to be trying to avoid any taxes. <laughs> All I'm saying is, is I know this guy. And uh, when when we get uh, off the yeah, thing, yeah, I'm going to hook. Say it every week. I'm going to hook you guys up. <laughs> Don't comply. Do not file. <laughs> Sorry. I think I'm but anyways, you had Brett Vinat. Yeah, I've had uh, just recently with Michael Dean. That was really exciting. I've had Nima Vidati on. Nice. Um, I don't know who the biggest name I've had on. I'm trying to think. Um, big names. Yeah, so yeah, those are huge names. Yeah. That are, yeah. The, the, well, the interview you did with with, um, with Michael was actually, the, I think, the first episode of yours that I actually sat down. I kept meaning to sit down and listen to like, a bunch of your episodes, and I, you know, I, whatever. I, I got, I actually, I, I, my workload had lessened in the last month or two, so like Dave, I had less time to listen to to the podcast than I normally do. So I wasn't even catching up on whatever else I was thought I was supposed to do. Um, yeah. But that was the first one I listened to, and uh, yeah, that was that was that was a good one too. I like that. Well, yeah, maybe you could get uh, Danilo Cuellar on. He's a pretty <laughs> hot guest. <laughs> yeah, he, he's he's got this really cool soul patch that like you almost <laughs> it gets it gets all the hot moms, all of them, <laughs> like literally every one of them. Well, well, just 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 got one in the past fifteen years. I mean, that's <laughs> God. You've been married for fifteen years. Yeah. I oh met, my! I, I didn't know that. Seventeen. Imagine I didn't that. know that, man. That's amazing. That's awesome. Imagine that. Seventeen. Yeah. Imagine oh. that. Yeah. She put up with you for seventeen years. I can't believe that. I, I tell her that when she gets really angry at me. You, you realize we've been together for fifteen years. Yeah, fifteen. How much? <laughs> and, and then when she, and then if she's really mad, I say, you realize. We're going to be together for the rest of your life. <laughs> of your life? <laughs> she like, oh, so you're already <laughs> predicting that you're going to outlast. Yeah. Oh, wow. Danilo's going to be on the prowl after that happens. 
Yeah. Maybe that, Jeremy's sister that'll be, that'll will be, be single. A, that'll be a whole new set. That'll be a whole new set of Dem- Danilo memes. <laughs> so, so, uh, so, Nick, how how is um, uh, being an anarchist and volunteers like? Do you talk to people that you meet like every day about this? Your friends or people you meet in the street? You. So you and your dad more more yeah. more. Yeah, I want to hear more about you and your yeah, dad. Yeah, yeah, do you how, guys argue? Yeah. How is it? Yeah. You actually, with your father. My dad is how I've become good at arguing. You know, that's where my critical thinking kind of started because he's really good at playing devil's advocate. He's a smart guy. He knows he knows a decent amount, and he can pick apart an argument. And he's good at kind of knowing how to say the right things to piss you off. <laughs> but it's, God, it's ridiculous. And he, I, for the longest time, I, I didn't realize that he was messing with me. But, no, yeah, that's usually who I argue with is usually him. He'll pick out like, – I'll say something, and he'll take the opposite side of it. Like – uh I, I still can't tell if he's serious with this, but he's a fan of kind of a fan of Bernie Sanders. So yeah. now I've I've kind of changed it on him. So I'll argue against that, and so we we talk back and forth, and it's interesting. It's fun. He he puts up his good uh, intellectual arguments for why Bernie Sanders is going to bring back, uh, bring bring more liberty than Donald Trump, and I think it's just stupid and ridiculous. I can't tell if he's joking, but uh, it's it's that's kind of where I argue the most about these ideas, even though he's, you know, I'm. If I haven't sold him on it already, I'm not going to sell him yet. I think he's pretty much on board with it. Sometimes energy. you just gotta you gotta throw that seed and and let it sprout. And you can't yell at it. You can't. No, you know, that's, yeah. That's why I tell everybody. You know, like I'll get to I'll get people in an argument to where they get to a point where I realize I'm not talking to their ration anymore, mm-hmm. and I'll just say, think about what I said, and back <laughs> off. There's some, so what I've been doing recently. I've been studying uh, nonviolent communication. Mm-hmm. And that stuff is really interesting. So I, I used to be a keyboard warrior. You know, I would I would be out there arguing with people online all the time. I hit the forums, and uh, I just got too stressed out in doing it. <laughs> and then that's right about when I started the podcast. I kind of realized like as, I, as, as soon as I got my own platform to speak on, I just didn't I didn't want to argue with people too much anymore because I didn't like them talking back to me and giving me. <laughs> <laughs> Shit, right? terrible argument. Who's going to build the roads, Nick, huh? <laughs> right. And uh, so I don't argue a whole lot. I, I don't like to uh, talk about politics with my buddies because they, they used to get pissed off at me. It's like, Nick, I don't want to talk about politics with you anymore. I get it. Yeah, no, okay, sure. The government sucks. And then <laughs> they just like, like, fine, Nick, you win. You win. What do your friends think about you quitting school and forming yaks? Did they they're think jealous. you went off the re- reservation? Or? Well, they're jealous. See, <laughs> Yeah, they're jealous. I don't, they might think that I'm crazy. They haven't told me that to my face. <laughs> See, that's, fun, that's so funny. Those were the two things I was thinking. When you said yeah, they were jealous, I'm like, oh, well, actually, that's better. Because if they, if they just thought you were crazy, that's – that's Why don't I, you tell them that they can do this too and get them I out? Do. I do. I tell them. I complain about school. I'm like, hey, you, you know, you could drop out. They're like, oh, but I can't think of a business idea. And I'm like, dude, come on. I'll well, give you some business ideas. Farm yeah, reindeer. Well, if, <laughs> I need somebody farming reindeer. <laughs> yeah, sh- yeah, yeah. Set them up, and then you take twenty percent of their. Don't, don't, don't give away the reindeer idea. Keep that one for yourself. That's yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm yeah, interested. Yeah. In. Don't give away. Don't give away. Um, I'll get somebody to farm mushrooms for me. Or, <laughs> ooh. No, see, it's 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 funny you said that though, because if if as long as you've, um, you know, you said you'd give them ideas, because it's one because I went through that when I started my business. Although granted, mine was ten years. Uh, almost 10 years <laughs> before actually no even longer than that i was 10 years more than 10 years older than you when i started mine um, but anyway i went through the same thing <laughs> with my friends um they thought i was crazy though they weren't jealous they thought i was crazy because i was just i'm gonna go start this pet sitting business what yeah, yeah you're gonna so wa- from- you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna walk dogs well to start <laughs> yeah that's how i'm gonna start yeah <laughs> sure and this so- is what you're gonna do at, at almost you know at almost 30 years old i'm like yeah yeah Oh man! I, I got written off for years, and then I got, and then people were like, "Whoa!" <laughs> when I started making money, and I was like, you know, when I had when I had to drop out of school, half, two two thirds of the way through my first year, because I had so much business that I couldn't make it to, because I had gone back to college just before I started it, because I was never, it was never supposed to be a full time thing. My business started as a as a as just something to put me through school. That was the point. I was going back to school to become a vet tech, and I was gonna, you know, and then maybe move on to like working in a uh, in a zoo or something, like moving up and working, you know, someplace like that. And uh, I just started this for the heck of it. So, but I went through the same thing. You know, like I said, it's, I actually feel it'd be better to have people be jealous. But if you give them the ideas and they're still not willing to, then screw them. They're just being lazy, you know. 
because uh, it's that's that's true. You got you just got to you know people can they just don't think the you know it's one thing if you can't think of the ideas, but if somebody gives you an idea and you're still like ah, <laughs> you know you're not trying like this. I mean for right. people like us, it's definitely I th I think you know it's definitely the way to show people. It's the it's one of the most powerful things you can do is to start your own business. Doesn't matter what the heck it is, find, whether you can f be lucky enough to to make it out of something you love, you know, if you have a product that you can produce or, or you know or whatever or or a service that you can provide that you love doing, that's great. That I mean, that's the that's the ultimate. Or yeah, totally. you or you can just find something you can find something that's missing in the market near you find something that that's all i've done you uh, yeah that you ever that maybe you say hey why, why don't we have this or you hear other people saying all the time well it really sucks you know we have to go all the way up to, so, to wherever to get this or to, to have this done because there's nothing around here like that just and you never know you may end up loving that in the end but like that's how you that's how you just go out on your own and say okay now i'm going to provide and if as long as you work hard it's okay. kind of hard to fail in those situations when, especially when you're finding a, a, a you know a break in the market where there's nothing there. Um, it's it, it's you know I, I did it. I got you know I, yes I got lucky sure, um, but there was there was there wasn't a lot of people doing what I do, you know ten years ago. Um, you know now there are, but I was established enough before it took off, to the point where ten years later I'm still averaging you know I you know, X amount of money. Hi, IRS and NSA um, every year. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I've been able to do... I'm still averaging for X living, amount of money. For, <laughs> for living on Long Island, which is so funny. I saw somebody post this in one of these, one of those Patriot groups or something today, and they were complaining about it because it, it's the two, the county I live in and the one next to it are, the, are considered the second highest place to live. When as, as, Overall, I think it might still be number two, but at, for raising children... It's the number two in the entire country. Mm -hmm. uh, Honolulu has to be number one. No, Washington, D.C. The most expensive place to raise two children. Honolulu has to be number one. No. Could you imagine Honolulu? No. <laughs> like a it's gallon not. of milk is like $14 an hour. Yeah, there's there. other things. There's, 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 there's balances when, when, they, when you go out there. There's, there's other stuff that it's not as expensive. So, no, DC, living, living in D.C. and just outside of D.C. has been the most expensive place for a while now because that's where all the politicians and the lobbyists and all those people live oh, yeah. um but uh you know it's 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 crazy so like but uh, you know i i do i do pretty well for myself up here up in this territory um you know and i had to put in some work but you know and yes i i same same as you i i was lucky i had family that was you know they they gave me um they just gave me backing in the sense that, you know, a couple of my family members got together and said, listen, we think you should try this and we'll get, you know, we'll back you for a year and we'll see what happens. And if, you know, if, if, if you end up failing, you know, whatever, you're on your own after that. But, and, uh, so that's what they did. And within eight, eight months, I was able to tell them I didn't need them anymore. And, uh, you know, 10 years later, here I am. Um, but so it's, it's, it, it, it bothers me that, you know, I say, I say this a lot and I actually, I said this in a, a, I think a group chat we were having earlier, um, about the fact that I'm one of the few capitalists I know among the I people who this, consider yeah, themselves, yeah, and caps and yep. stuff. Like I, like, yep. I, I mean, I, I see other people say it too, like, but of the ones I personally know, I'm one of the very few. And there's so many, there's so many of them out there that are just really shitty at the capitalist part. Because they're and and they're a lot of people are right in their in their anger that they're being blocked in some way by government regulations or you know uh, you know permitting or whatever like whatever is holding them back that's like legitimate like okay I I'm being blocked by this you know I again I fall into a different category with my business because there's not really too many regulations against it. Um, it's one of those loopholes and the very few things in New York that's not heavily re regulated because it's not really it's even now it's still not considered a an actual business by whatever standards they have because um, there's no I don't I don't need to have a license I don't need to have anything like that for my business um, I just per I personally choose to have insurance and a dishonesty bond for my when I have independent contractors working for me um, and uh, but other than that you know I, I fall into that category but again that's something else look for something not only in the market that is a need 
but that is not heavily regulated. Like we were talking about before with the yak meat or anything, whatever it is, like there's so many things out there that people could do. And it just drives me nuts that people sit there and they, and they come up against one roadblock and then they just give up and they say, well, I can't do it because X. Okay. Well, try to find another way or what, you know, again, I preach non-compliance all the time. So step sure. outside of the bounds yeah. if you have to, Go you know, agorist, yeah. take, yeah, exactly. Take whatever risks, take, take as far as you're willing to go, take them. Cause otherwise the, you know, cause I say all the time, I don't think I'm ever going to get to see a free society. I'm going to be long gone before that ever happens. Um, but I, I get flashes of excitement when I meet more and more people that are just coming to this now and the, and it's, you know, I've, I've said this before, I might have even been last week when we had a, uh, we had a Merrick and Andre on about, uh, you know, the, the, the growth with people like, uh, or no, actually, I know we, we said it when Rand was on, um, people um, like Larkin and uh, Larkin Rose and people who have been in this for a long time, all kind of agreeing that within the last five, three to five years, there's been like this explosion that they hadn't seen in a long, you know, at, pretty much at all. Um, and for me, it's difficult when I'm not, um, I wasn't back then, I didn't know anything. So I don't really recognize the change, but now I can see it in the short time I've been on this. And it's like, yeah, I still see it happening. So I get those, I get those moments, moments of excitement where I'm like, maybe, maybe I will see it. <laughs> um, but then I quickly get discouraged again when I run into all these and caps that suck at being caps. And uh, it's just, it's like, I, I don't understand. I'm just like, you, you gotta, I wish more people were willing to take the risks. It just, you know, it's... It's tough. I mean, you already have your totally life. You're, you're, you're in this, like, you're in this, like, groove, right? See, like with me, when I first found out about this stuff, you know, I have a mortgage, I have a home, I can't No, and I it. get that. And it, See, see I, I, I know this comes off sounding, like, arrogant of me, and I don't know, like... But it just it's like me. how many Christians do you know walk around, have no worldly possessions, and all they do is speak the good word? Almost zero. No, no, no. I know. And I get, I'm not talking about being like a purist, but necessarily, or maybe I am. I don't know. Just to me, it, <laughs> it just, no, it just, it, like, it's this thing in me where, like, I don't want to, like, come off sounding like a martyr or anything like that. Um, cause it, that's not how this is intended. But, you know, I, I say all the time, I don't fault people for not, but there's just a part of me that it just bugs me when so, when I see so many people continue to complain and yeah, so. then not be willing to take that extra step because I'm like, listen, look at me. I got two little kids. I got a business. I got a mortgage, you know, like I'm putting a lot of freaking crap on the line by sticking my neck out there a little further than other people. And I'm not trying to like, I'm not trying to egg other people on to be a dick and be like, well, why the hell aren't you doing it? But like, I'm trying to ask honestly, like, what is it that what is it what 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 are you afraid of like how like is, are you that afraid of the repercussions like do i want to die or be end up in a cage hell fucking no but you know like you you gotta push back a little bit more and i just wish more people would because it, it you don't even have to go like full bore like civil disobedience over everything you can just start a business and even if it's not above board Grow, grow, you know, grow the trust in your community. And, you know, that's what I'm doing now. And I'm using my business now to promote these ideas, to yeah. get my clients to look at them. Cause I started taking my business more agorist. I'm I, I explained to everybody that I'll still take cash for now, but I'm trying to move away from that. And uh, they, a lot of people are starting to understand. So, you know, it's it, it, all these things are possible. I just, I don't know. I guess I'm angry tonight. <laughs> I, yeah, want, yeah. I, I want more people. I want more people. I want more people to, to, to be willing to do this stuff, you know, instead yeah, of just I, talking I, about it. I think what's um, what's pretty admirable about your position is that, you, you're, you know, you said you have your kids, you have your business, longstanding business and your mortgage, you know, all these assets. And and that's, you know, that frightens a lot of people. Even people who don't have those things, like I don't have a business, you know, I have kids, but, and, and, and it's amazing. Some people, they just have a nine to five or an eight to five job. They go to work and they're afraid to lose their job. So they just keep in line, you know, pay their taxes. I mean, I mean, I guess there's taxes that's automatically taken out when they have their paycheck, but, but, um, you know, people are afraid so easily from what might happen. 
and um, and you're right. I think I think non-compliance is is one of the best things that we can do. You know, for um, you know nullifying nullifying any tyranny in your life, right? You know, you can't really help your neighbor. You know, you try to you know you try to talk to people, you try to educate people, but uh, you know it's it's up to them to make the changes in their lives. And and then you know you can call yourself an anarchist, but then you know we have these principles, but then you have to make the choice how much in your life do you want to live according to the principles right because like you said you know you can be a purist and and then you can take that to whatever level <laughs> you know yeah. you want everybody makes their own decision for what's acceptable in their lives and uh, yes yeah, it's hard to criticize other people and you know certainly we do yeah, I, I <laughs> all, know. The in, well, all the infighting you know and and like 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 i get i get criticized by my own family when wow. i take my kids to a library <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and my wait, mother, okay, and my mother drive on the road. <laughs> and my mother's right. Yeah, my mother's like, don't you? Aren't you so grateful that there is public funds to go to the library? Because <laughs> we went to this clown and magic show. Aren't you grateful that there's public funds that you know made it so you could go to the library and enjoy this show? And that started a whole big conversation about like, like, okay, do you think I'm a hypocrite? Because I um, I go to the library and you know she did this whole roundabout thing. Well, well, you know if you you know if you pay your taxes then you know you have to pay your taxes and if you do then you gotta you know appreciate the service. I'm like all right, <laughs> so, but she didn't say outright hypocrite though. And I'm like all right. So do you think I'm a hypocrite if I go to a, a state park? And she says, and she said the same exact thing. Do you think I'm a hypocrite if I use the roads? <laughs> and then she's quiet. Yes. Do you think if I do you think I'm a hypocrite if I use Federal Reserve notes? <laughs> like, like, right? Like, how far are you willing to go to to say that using a government monopoly is hypocritical because we have no choice but to use that, right? <laughs> no, right? you're right. <laughs> how far are you willing to go? And and you know, we try to live, you know, agorist and and uh, you know, Bitcoin's just taking off, and, and and we're trying to use that more, and gold and silver, and things. Well, gold and silver been around, but you know, hopefully, people are buying that more. But. Uh, you, know, you got to make these choices. You know, everybody makes their own choices and, and how much they want to live according to their principles. And uh, yeah, you know, so this this um, you know, from that perspective, the infighting is um, kind of counterproductive and self-destructive because because everybody everybody has their own unique situation. You know, <laughs> like just like Nick. You know, who 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 what's that? What's another anarchist yak farmer? Yeah, I've never heard. Of one. He, he's that's the right. only anarcho yakalist I, I know of. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's awesome. So. <laughs> Yeah, so sort of go back there a little bit. Um, talk about that crazy angle. As people did look at me and say, like when I said first, I'm going to drop out of school and I hate the government. People are like, you're ridiculous, Nick. And then I started getting some attention. right? I, I started just kind of showing myself, like I'm producing content now. I started podcasting. People are like, oh, shit, maybe Nick has something here. But still, <laughs> they're like, they're not quite on with it. And then it got bigger. I started having more guests. I started getting interviewed more. And I hopped on the Freedom Fans. They're like, oh, my God, Nick's on live radio. <laughs> like what like, were we wrong so I, I mean i can't read people's minds nobody's ever told me that but you know that's i've noticed that i get a lot less flack now because uh, i have that unique piece to be able to uh produce content and to kind of show off right i people know what i'm doing because i i, I talk about it and uh, you can see me out there in the fields working you can see what i'm doing on facebook you can see hey, i'm being interviewed by dave vayner and jeremy hangler and danilo Q Q I don't know. <laughs> we, 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 gotta we, we gotta work on that. Quay Quay R. Okay, all right. <laughs> Just like Quay Lude. I thought I had no, 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 no. Which I'm sure, Nick, I'm, I'm sure Danilo knows all about. With the Nick, Nick, no, just to remember Quay R. Don't how he read. Gets them. Don't read so it because when you read it, you're gonna go Q R. <laughs> but so uh, the people get to see that, and so I <laughs> live that example. I like what you're saying, Jeremy. Is that? trying to be the example of showing hey you can do this and now you, you can't push people into doing it you just gotta yeah, say no, hey I, I did it and when they ask like hey how did you do this and yeah but no yeah i think you're totally right and i get upset at kind of the same thing because people will like they, they bitch at me because like nick you got in your land like how like nobody else gets that uh how can you tell people to drop out of school when you have such a unique position and i'm like well sure yeah no i do have a unique position i i'm i'm very lucky i'm very and i'm very grateful for that yeah. But uh, why why can't you do something else? Like, why are you focusing on my agriculture business? Uh, like, are you interested in agriculture? Like, why don't you actually go out and figure out how to do it? Because I know people. I've heard the stories. People go out and lease. You know, it's mm. it's it's difficult to start a business for sure. But 
you can do it. And it, the only thing it takes is a little bit of hard work and uh, a little, yeah, just, just go for it. I like the thing that uh, a few people push. I think Jack Spearco is big on this as well as Joshua Sheets. Joshua Sheets pushes this. It's starting a side hustle. Get your side hustle going. You know, have your, your day job, but have something going on the side. Like uh, I think we talked about Drew Sample earlier. That was the most recent show I put out. Uh, he's starting up a microgreens business, and he's still working in sales or something somewhere. But uh, you know, start that side hustle and then let it grow a little bit. So get started as soon as possible, because as soon as you get started, it's only going to go grow, right? So getting that side hustle started and then eventually trying to wean off your job. I mean, that's the that's the way you're going to get personal freedom in your life. To if you can control your time, I mean that. So you, many got people fail to realize that economic freedom means just as much to the human condition as personal freedom. Well, it's, I, I think, well, I mean, they obviously go hand in hand, but I, I would say that in, at least in the current structure, economic freedom may, may actually trump everything else because you need it to get everything you need, you current, you need it in the current model to be, to be able to get as much as possible of everything else. Um, but yeah, I, I get what you're saying. Absolutely. You're right. You're, no, no, you're right on that. But uh, so uh, you ready to wrap up? I, I usually ask every guest we have what their favorite quote ever is. And uh, Nick, you go ahead and lay that on us. I know you got a good one. <laughs> I don't have a good one. Oh, so, come on. Unrelated you to yaks, right? Unrelated, <laughs> unrelated to yaks. So are, there, are never... there any great yak quotes? <laughs> Should we should we should, we should we should we start should we start it should we start a hashtag yak teeth yak quotes or hack? yak teeth very hard to milk yeah <laughs> I think he's cornered the market for yak that would be the first That's one really... I'm gonna put um, that out tonight <laughs> so you don't have a, like a favorite quote or a quote that really inspires you no well so I would say the quotes uh, the one I only have close to memorize would be Lysander Spooner uh, a man is no less a slave if he can choose. Uh, his own master and once in a term of however many years. I don't know. What it, I, I'm butchering it, but that's that's probably the one that, that pops into my head most of the time. Yeah, that's, nice. a that's a good one. Important to point right. that out. But at yeah. least we can vote them out, you know? If they act like jerks, we can just vote them out. Use the ballot. <laughs> Right. I, I said that's today right. the last two hundred years. Uh, uh, you know what? You know what I tell people? Did you vote for the last bill on how much they spent last year? Did you vote for the Federal Reserve? Did you vote how much money they printed in, in the past couple? Did you vote? <laughs> did you vote for any of that? Did you vote on the Patriot, the Patriot Act? Act? Yeah. Did you vote yeah. on the NDAA? Did you vote on the Freedom Act? Did you vote on any of that? I'm sorry. <laughs> did you vote on Supreme Court? Did you vote on net no. neutrality? Did you vote? <laughs> so. Right. I, uh, I made a post uh, in the group today, the Seeds of Liberty group, and it said voting for freedom or voting for liberty is uh, like planting watermelons in the desert. <laughs> yeah. Well. Our, our voting for liberty is as, as fruitful as planting watermelon in, this, in the desert. That's what it was. <laughs> and that is absolutely fact. Like, I, I, I try not to, like, you know, be angry about it and yell at people, but voting is pointless. It's a waste of time. Stand with Rand. Oh yeah, Rand's gonna fix it all. Rand would be killed the first day. Well, He'd be would. swearing he's in on the Bible, and it'd be a sniper shot right to the. Head. <laughs> no, he's, no not. he's not. He's not going anywhere. He's not. They're not gonna pay attention. He's not. He, you know, I, I don't. I, I don't think he's the. He's the one that would get that treatment. Though. What, I, don't I don't know what the hell's gonna happen. I don't know what the hell's. I don't know who's gonna win it. I hope it's not Trump. But Donnie anyways, Trump. Donnie Trump. No, Thank actually, you. actually, I, I'm I'm rooting for Donald Trump or Bernie Sanders just because I think it would accelerate mm -hmm. the collapse. I think See, you know, yeah, and because because if a libertarian did get in into power, like like Rand Paul, he's and, not a libertarian. Think, or whatever, or whatever he calls himself, and things go to crap, they're gonna blame libertarianism for whatever happens under his rule, right? So. So I'm. I would rather it be a fascist See, or a socialist or whatever. Yeah, and if he got his way, right? If we're gonna start decreasing government, then it's gonna take longer. See, right? see, you're what you're talking about yeah, is it's, it's, it's we've a, got a car that has no brakes on it. Lose situation. The, <laughs> we have a car. Out of control. We, we, no, we we have a car with no brakes on it, and Donald Trump is pushing the gas pedal faster. <laughs> Voting Libertarian is trying to slam the brake on again. <laughs> when you know it's not going to work and not voting and becoming an anarchist is jumping out of the car, AKA the smartest thing to do. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. 
So can you please tell Adam Kokish that? <laughs> when he comes on the show, I will. Yeah, what happened with that, Dave? Um, I have. I'll ask him. Again. I was just gonna. Uh, I, I I was just gonna say that. Yeah. I mean, I was arguing so, was about, about this with people earlier too. Um, it's not. You know, the I I think the whole idea of the speeding up process. I I, I don't I don't buy that argument because it's been getting worse the whole time. And it hasn't really sped up much. So I, I don't really think that Bernie or Trump would actually speed the, because I heard the same arguments about Hillary at one point. I don't think any of it or any, it, it's still gonna, it's still gonna go on the same pace. I mean, hopefully the, the new, the, the newer trend in the past couple of years where, you know, our, our, you know, the collective, our ranks are, are growing a little bit. Um, I hope that trend continues, and then you know, and and then that'll be better. But I, I don't think I don't think either of them will actually speed up the process because I I think they'll just end up being an extension of what has happened with Obama and what happened with Bush, like what because all this stuff has been leading up, especially at the very least since Reagan. This has all been leading, like all been ramping up to a certain place, and it's basically just been like no real change after like clinton reagan yes okay they were different but in reality what really changed because more laws were added more money was added to the to the to the, to the national debt um and uh, everybody woke up the next day a little less free it really hasn't stopped you know and less so, rich yeah 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 and 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 less wealth at, at any level because you can't possibly own much of these these days if you're anybody who's not on the inside you know it's tough um so yeah absolutely like so that's that's my i don't that's like i i don't think there's gonna it's just gonna be like because it's the whole um you know it's the frog in the pot of boiling water it's been going on long enough and even this latest surge has been going on long enough that people there's still millions and millions and millions of people that honestly can't recognize that there was really no change over in the last you know the in the 2008 election nothing changed at all except no, except, one, except one the woman, pressure the pressure one, one woman recognized the change though i think it was the first term that uh, obama was was elected in his inauguration, there's this black woman that was in tears, you know. I'm not going to have to pay my mortgage. I won't have to pay taxes anymore. I'm so happy. I don't understand how somebody <laughs> can be that and deluded. Then, and, and, then she, and then she was interviewed like a few years later. She's like, yeah, I might have overdone it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Well, she, Nick, I really she, appreciate she that there was. <laughs> Nick, I really appreciate you coming on, man. I. I... Is there anything you you want to tell any uh, say before you get off? Maybe uh, no. plug all your stuff. Yeah, absolutely. So you can find uh, the podcast uh, Narco Yakitalism Podcast. It's spelled Narco Capitalism, but instead of uh, a C A P, it's a Y A K. Yak. Was that was that your idea or somebody else's idea? That was mine. I came up with it on my uh, own. That's an awesome very idea. Very proud of that. <laughs> yeah, very cool. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> I like so it as well. Can, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's a good yak bun. I think it's one of the better ones. <laughs> but uh, it's, well, you can find that on iTunes, Stitcher, TuneIn, Podomatic, the Liberty Radio Network, and you can find it at my website, an-yak.com, an-yak.com. And you can find some of my stuff uh, uh, on the Freedom Fiends. Go to freedomfiends.com. Sweet. Yeah. yeah. Beautiful. Right. Thanks a yeah, lot, Thanks Nick. for having me on, guys. Yeah, Come man. I, I just want—I just want to say, yeah, man. It was—it was great having you on. Um, I'm actually, uh, I, I'm, I, I'm hoping to get paired up with you at some point on the fiends too. Um, it was, yeah, it was totally. good. It was, it was good to finally talk to you. Um, because I've actually, you know, like I, I said earlier, you know, I, I jokingly say that I'm like super jealous of people like you, but it, it really is. It excites me to see people, you know, your, you know, younger people that are like this far in the game already. It's so, it's so great. And I've been listening to, you know, I've, I've been listening to you pretty much since, cause I came, I started to come around and started to listen to the fiends off and on right around the time where you joined up with them. Um, so I've been listening to you for a while, you know, man, and you're, you're polished beyond, <laughs> beyond anything I could have been, you know, which is, it's great, man. You're, you you got, I, appreciate that. I, I think you're, you're, you're somebody a lot of people can look up to. And, uh, I hope a lot more people take, you know, take the lead, like, like we we're talking about. So, uh, this has yeah. been great, man. I'm glad, uh, glad we finally got you on here. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> nice. Well, Nick, thanks a lot for coming on the show. Really appreciate it. Awesome conversation. 
So if anyone wants to help out our show, um, we accept Bitcoin and Patreon. Um, what is the what is the actual URL? So, um, Patreon.com slash Seeds of Liberty? Seeds of Liberty, yeah. Seeds of Liberty, yeah. So uh, please check us out. Throw us some, uh, some coins. Some I wanted to give a holler out to Dylan Robinson. He gave $10, $10 a month. Uh, he's, uh, he's currently in the uh, armed forces and uh, was like, hey, I figured I could give some money back. <laughs> 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 big, big shout out to Dylan. He's a really cool dude. Nice. Excellent. Yeah, help us out. We'd love to get guests on, like awesome guests like uh, like Nick to uh, help spread the word. So beautiful. All right. So uh, this is uh, the Seeds of Liberty podcast. Um, wishing everyone have a wonderful day. Take care. Bye. Peace. Peace.